Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna be doing a six month review of the Joy Auto Apple CarPlay unit that I put into my Porsche 911 991. Let's go check it out. So yeah, it's been about six months since I installed this aftermarket unit into my 991. And uh, a lot of people have been asking uh, for sort of advice and feedback along the way as to how it's been faring. And overall, I'm still really happy with it. Uh, I have a friend here locally in the Twin Cities that uh, I helped uh, put the same unit into his 991. And um, I probably know, I would say, about 15 people now around the world that have gone and put these devices in, um, maybe not from seeing my video, but certainly following the installation uh, DIY video that I did. Um, so uh, it seems to be you know, a pretty popular product. Uh, so far from um, all the folks that I'm in contact with, they really like it having put it in their car. Um, there are a couple of quirks that I wanted to talk about in this video, but uh, yeah, and I'm sorry for taking a while to get around to doing this, but it has been about six months since I installed it. And uh, let's just put it this way, I haven't taken it out yet. <laughs> First things first, uh, the installation. Uh, I still look back fondly on the installation. Uh, it was definitely one of the more uh, complicated jobs that I've done on my car um, and pretty fiddly. Uh, and, but you know, the funny thing is, is that the, uh, the installation steps still really stand out to me. So when people even today ask me, you know, hey, what about this bit or what about that bit? It's still really sort of top of mind. Uh, and I remember it kind of step by step. I think pretty confidently I could do the job again uh, without having to refer back to my video too often. Um, so installation wise, you know, it, it was pretty straightforward. Sorry, <laughs> it wasn't pretty straightforward. It was pretty complicated. Um, but the thing I'm glad for is that you wouldn't know that it's there. That's definitely one of the pros of this kind of approach. It's all fully integrated into the PCM. You don't see any of the wiring. You don't see any cables. Uh, you probably wouldn't even know it was in the car. So if I sold this tomorrow, you probably wouldn't know it was there. Uh, this, the only way I think you would notice is if you were um, you know, randomly looking for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi networks sat in the car, you would see a couple of networks that say Joy Auto. And um, perhaps if uh, you, know, you were rooting around pulling out the trim, you might notice a few additional wires and then the box itself, but you'd really have to be pulling the car apart to find it. So the fact that it is seamless uh, behind the PCM, behind the dash uh, is, is really fantastic. Functionally, it's, it's pretty awesome. In fact, I would say the only kind of things that are letting it down is the sort of native uh, functionality of the PCM itself. And by that, I mean the touchscreen. So, uh, you have all of the touchscreen kind of functionality that you would expect to have from CarPlay, but on the more modernized uh, touchscreen interfaces that are put in cars these days, they're very similar more and more to the sort of touchscreen experience you're familiar with, with iPads. In fact, um, I think it's Samsung that basically white label their tablets into a lot of automotive manufacturers. I'm not so sure about Apple, but Anyway, the, this uh, PCM unit was designed around 2011, 2012. This is a 2013. Um, so while a touchscreen does work, it's not quite as responsive 
or forgiving as a modern touchscreen. So you have to really make sure you're pushing the button. And while the sort of push button functionality works just fine, the one thing that does let me down constantly is uh, trying to pan and scan. So scrolling from left to right to get through uh, the menus, quite often it will think that you're actually pushing the button as opposed to scrolling across several buttons. So going from one menu screen to the next, uh, you quite often find yourself making a mistake. That's a little bit frustrating. Um, but yeah, generally it's very reliable. I think there have only been a couple of times when my phone has failed to connect to the device and it's just required me uh, to turn off my Bluetooth settings on my phone and turn them back on again. And magically the, the phone reappears on the PCM. I'd probably say maybe, I don't know, one time out of a hundred it fails to connect. Usually when I open the car and I turn the ignition on, within about 10 to 15 seconds, you can see the Joy Auto screen pop up and, uh, and then it recognizes that you have uh, CarPlay. If I had an Android phone, it would recognize and show me the Android logo. And then it opens up the, the, um, the iOS CarPlay app itself and then you're there to go. There are times when it won't automatically show up on the screen and you have to manually press the Navi button, which allows you to flip between um, the native PCM screens and operating software and the Joy Auto Apple CarPlay software. So on occasion, if it hasn't already come up automatically, within about 30 seconds, I'll push the Navi button and it'll appear. On those rare occasions where it doesn't come up at all, it, it is just simply a case of um, resetting your Bluetooth on and off on your phone and then you find it again and it should automatically connect. If not, you can just manually click it. Um, so they're, they're the two things that do kind of bug me. I wouldn't say on a day-to-day -day basis, but every couple of weeks, if it does fail to connect or every couple of weeks, if I am trying to scroll through the screens and the PCM touchscreen isn't quite behaving like I would expect my iPhone or a, a tablet to behave, that's a little bit, I wouldn't say frustrating, but it's a little bit disappointing. Um, there is one thing which I haven't yet fully figured out, which is uh, I, I'm never confident that when I receive a phone call that uh, the Apple CarPlay phone function is going to pick up as opposed to PCM. So uh, there are times when I can see the call presented on the screen um, through the CarPlay software and I press to accept, but I don't hear any audio. And somehow, whether it's Joy Auto failing or the car taking over, the audio is actually being fed through the PCM. So I need to flip my phone from thinking that it's, it's operating through the CarPlay on the, uh, on the Bluetooth menu to pressing the PCM. And then once I press the PCM on my, my phone's Bluetooth menu or the phone call pad, it then comes through the audio through the car. So that's a little bit annoying, but 100% uh, of the time, if I use CarPlay and the screen to dial out, it will dial out through CarPlay. But there's a 50-50 chance that if you're receiving a phone call and you use your phone to answer or instead of CarPlay or your, your steering wheel controls, not that I have them, but other people will, it doesn't always come through uh, on the CarPlay. So that's a bit annoying. So that's, that's my biggest gripe. And then the other gripe is occasionally, I'll get the video of CarPlay presented on the screen automatically, but I won't get any audio. And I've got to go to my AUX button and I've got to press AUX. And I'm still not 100% sure if I should be going to the Bluetooth AUX or the AUX. And I'm sure it's just a question of looking in the instruction manual or, or contacting Joy Auto to find out, but it isn't quite intuitive uh, and it doesn't do it all the time automatically. So sometimes I'll get in the car, start it up, and I'll get the music playing that I left off, you know, the day before or even just a few minutes before. Sometimes I can see that there's a track playing on CarPlay but there's no audio and the volume button doesn't seem to do anything and so I then have to go into the, the menus to make sure the aux is, sw is switching. So it's a really great product for 350 bucks or whatever it was to buy. Um, it's definitely money well spent because it is so, even when it's not working properly, it is so much more attractive to look at and it's so much easier to use and it's so much more functionally rich than the PCM uh, default, you know, sort of screens. It's definitely worth the money. The installation um, is pretty complex, but you know, if you, uh, 
If you're good at following instructions, let's put it that way, I think you'll be able to do a good job of, of installing it. Um, I'm certainly gonna leave it in the car, unlike my 996 and my 997, where I put an aftermarket unit in, I was constantly going backwards and forwards as to whether or not I wanted this in the car and should I just go back to the basic PCM. With this, I'm so happy that it's in the car. So, you know, overall, still really happy. If I had to give it, you know, a five star rating, I'd probably give it a four or a four and a half. If I had to give it a, you know, a rating out of 10, I'd probably say eight and a half, nine out of 10, which is, which is pretty good, especially since I've been living with it for six months. Uh, so that's it, that's my six month review. Uh, if you have any questions, if you're going through the install procedure, if you're right in the middle and you're stuck, um, please let me know. I, I will say actually, um, from my own experience and from what a, lo a lot of other people are finding, there are two things that can go wrong with the installation which seem to bite pretty much everybody. The first is the, the video cable that you put from the Joy Auto device into the back of the new circuit board that you put inside the PCM. There is only one way to put that in and you put it in with the pins facing up, not down. And some people have been putting it in down so you're not getting the connectivity between the circuit board and the wire. The second thing, and this is the most common thing that is biting people, is that the 48 pin adapter that goes into the back of the PCM um, there's two scenarios. One is you put it in and you clip it down and you think it's secure, but it's not actually in all the way. So there's no connection between the wires within the 48 pin harness and the back of the PCM. So it looks like it's connected, but it's really not. And so you don't get any audio and you don't get any video. The other scenario sort of associated with that one is that you get the wiring harness in the back and it's plugged in correctly, which is extending from the previous um, big black fat wiring harness. So you've put in this extension and you're getting video, but you're not getting any sound. And chances are that means you've got the Bose system. And what you haven't done is you haven't removed the orange fiber optic. Uh, there are two orange fiber optic wires that go from the original wiring harness and you pull those out and you put them directly into the back of the new wiring harness, which goes directly into the, to the, uh, the PCM. So the fiber optic uh, audio lines need to go directly into the PCM not through the extension cable and not in the original 48 pin. So a lot of people are turning it on, it's working, they can see the screen, but there's no audio and they're busy, you know, swearing at their phone or swearing at the PCM and it's really just that simple. Either the, the 48 pin connector isn't in, I know I'm repeating myself, but the 48 uh, pin connector isn't in or the fiber optic orange wires um, haven't been transferred into the new wiring harness. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Six months in, pretty happy. Uh, still here to help if anybody needs help. Um, I think Joy Auto um, have actually been pointing people to my video, <laughs> which is really nice. Uh, it's been getting a lot of views. Uh, but you know, happy listening, happy riding. Uh, more videos coming next week. Uh, more videos coming this week. I'm pretty excited. We've got a podcast coming out tomorrow to bring you the latest news on Project 996. Um, we found a car. We haven't got our hands on it yet, but it'll be coming soon. Um, if you go to autoamateur.com forward slash project 996, you can see uh, the bios of myself, Patrick and Steve. I'm really excited to introduce those guys to you. We're gonna be working on this project together. Man, it's gonna be so cool. I'm really, really excited. All right, guys, thanks for checking in. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.